I can't understand Chinese. So where the f do I get my news about Hong Kong from? Hello, I'm Yondan Lato at the South China Morning Post. Thanks for joining us here on TVB News. It was at this minute at 5.58 p.m. that police first fired tear gas. Will the WHO consider Taiwan's membership? I'll tell you to be very honest, I don't know what to say. Do you have any words for that? Just for the record, I can speak and understand Cantonese. So I am able to understand most of Hong Kong's local language video news. But I can't read Chinese. So I cannot read the Chinese news without the help of Google Translate. There is a community of people in Hong Kong who can't understand any Chinese. Mostly made up of expats. So where the hell do they get their news about Hong Kong from? How do you stay informed about what's happening in Hong Kong when you can't understand Chinese? Well, there are several English news sources in Hong Kong. For this video, I want to give an overview of the major ones so that people that can't understand Chinese can be more informed about what's happening here. Now, before I can talk about each English news outlet, I need to explain to you the unique political spectrum in Hong Kong. In most countries like the UK and the US, the political spectrum kind of looks like this. On the right, you have conservative and right wing, on the left, you have liberal, socialist and communist. And in the centre, you have the moderates. The Hong Kong political spectrum looks more like this. So on the one end, you have pro-government supporters, also known as the pro-Beijing or the pro-China camp. These are people that support the Hong Kong government and also the one-party authoritarian regime of the Chinese Communist Party of China. They are represented by the colour blue. On the other end, you have the pro-democracy supporters. These are people who support increased democracy for Hong Kong, with the aim of achieving the right for Hong Kong citizens to vote for the chief executive of Hong Kong and all the seats in the Legislative Council. They are represented by the colour yellow. Now, it can be said that within the pro-government and the pro-democracy camps, you have groups that are liberal and left-wing, and groups that are conservative or right-wing. But, on the whole, the pro-democracy camp tends to be more liberal, whereas the pro-government camp tends to be more conservative. It is a bit more complicated than that, but I'd have to make a whole new video to explain all of this. Which I might one day. So, that's the Hong Kong political spectrum. And it's important to know this, because news media here in Hong Kong falls mainly into either of these two camps. So let's start with the largest English language news source, the South China Morning Post. This is the oldest English language newspaper in Hong Kong and was founded by anti-Qing dynasty revolutionary Titan Tai and journalist Alfred Cunningham in 1903. For a long time, it was the only news source in Hong Kong doing British colonial rule. If you're looking for a news source that breaks the news fairly quickly and has extensive coverage of all things going on in Hong Kong, South China Morning Post, in my opinion, is the one to go to. It usually explains political issues that are going on in Hong Kong fairly well, releases pretty good video content on these issues, and has some fairly interesting, albeit varying quality, of opinion pieces. South China Morning Post's app is the most well-designed English news app in Hong Kong, and is also the one that sends the most regular push notifications whenever important news breaks. So, in my opinion, it's the best English language news source for keeping you alert about the most crucial headlines in Hong Kong. In general, it's a fairly high quality publication and still the most widely circulated English language newspaper in Hong Kong. In recent years, it's been accused of being pro-Beijing, mainly because it's under the ownership of mainland Chinese company Alibaba. There have been reports that most of the editorial team are pro-government and have doctored, rewritten or even censored articles to be more sympathetic to the Hong Kong government or the Chinese Communist Party. And judging from the tone of some of the news reports, this does appear to be somewhat true. The chief news editor of the South China Morning Post is a guy called Yondan Latu, who is known for his vicious video rants, most of which are highly critical of the pro-democracy camp. Hello, I'm Yondan Latu at the South China Morning Post. It's time to talk about the dirty, rotten politics Britain is playing in the name of saving the people of Hong Kong from repression. The British government is peddling a pipe dream to Hong Kongers, pretending it cares for their well-being and encouraging them to abandon their own homeland. Let's just say he's a divisive figure and not someone I'd like to have a drink with. 
But with a chief news editor with views like that and mainland Chinese ownership, it's easy to see why South China Morning Post is seen as pro-China. But yeah, South China Morning Post, fairly high quality and extensive coverage for the most part, and great for keeping you alert on the most crucial headlines in Hong Kong, but leans towards the pro-China side. Run by journalists. Supported by readers. Not for profit. And completely independent. Hong Kong Free Press. This is a relative newcomer to the English language news in Hong Kong. It is an online newspaper that was founded in 2015 by a British guy called Tom Grundy, who has a history of activism. Here he is attempting to make a citizen's arrest of Tony Blair during a speech in Hong Kong. Long this afternoon. Blair, I'm conducting um, a citizen's arrest for crimes against peace under the Hong Kong Power 101 you, you, you law. To... You misled the British people. You caused the deaths of at least 100,000 people. Excuse me, I think we are Hong having Kong a, police are obliged a to lecture support today. Your arrest. A lot of people have come The Iraq war one. defied the Nuremberg Excuse Principle, a lot of people the have UN come... Charter, the Geneva Convention, okay, and a pending international now, court. Why didn't you let me go on make Tom Grundy also founded HongRong.com, which is no longer updated, but still a great place to learn about alternative culture and history of Hong Kong. In fact, some of the content on HongRong.com has been continued on the Hong Kong Free Press with a section on satire and urban exploring in Hong Kong. The Hong Kong Free Press is a non-profit news outlet founded mainly to cover the pro-democracy movement and also in response to the declining press freedoms and increasing media censorship in Hong Kong. The website menu is organised by all the different political issues in Hong Kong, so it really is a good place to get up to speed on all things political in Hong Kong. The Hong Kong Free Press proclaims it is an independent newspaper, meaning that it answers only to its readers and does not have to censor or amend any articles to prevent affecting business interests. This is unlike the South China Morning Post, which has been accused of answering to its mainland Chinese owners. Hong Kong Free Press say they are a politically neutral newspaper, but in my opinion, their coverage is very sympathetic and generous to the pro-democracy movement. I would place the Hong Kong Free Press on the pro-democracy end of the political spectrum. Tom Grundy runs the Hong Kong Free Press with a fairly small team, but it's got the feel of a fairly established news outlet with fairly high quality journalism and pretty extensive coverage of all things happening in Hong Kong. Hong Kong Free Press releases regular video content on their social media and YouTube. It's not quite as polished as the videos on South China Morning Post, but the content is good and there's a lot of coverage of the pro-democracy movement and ongoing political issues in Hong Kong. It's far more heavily focused on politics than South China Morning Post, which has as much content on lifestyle, entertainment and business as it does on political news. But that's not a bad thing at all. Hong Kong Free Press covers the political news extremely well and should be one of your most important go-to news sources. And there's a real sense it's a newspaper with its ethics in the right place. It has a very clear code of ethics published on its website, which is something you don't tend to see from news outlets in Hong Kong. The Hong Kong Free Press app needs a bit of work and doesn't have the regular push notifications that the South China Morning Post app has to inform you of important breaking news. But you can follow their Facebook page where they post links to articles of important and breaking news very regularly. So if you're looking for a news source that breaks news fairly quickly and has the most in-depth coverage of political issues, particularly pertaining to the pro-democracy camp, Hong Kong Free Press is the one for you. RTHK, short for Radio Times Hong Kong. It is essentially Hong Kong's BBC. It's a public broadcaster. And just like the British Broadcasting Corporation, it has a mission to provide impartial news reporting, which is independent from the government and any commercial interests. This is outlined in its charter. However, unlike the BBC, RTHK is funded entirely by the Hong Kong government. RTHK doesn't really place anywhere on the political spectrum because it is neutral. It's one of the more established news outlets and was launched in 1928 by the British colonial government. RTHK does have television programming, but most of its content is now online on its website, app, YouTube and social media. Generally, a lot of its coverage and programming is pretty highbrow. 
The RTHK website and app delivers breaking news fairly quickly, albeit with more low-key and to-the-point language and presentation than the South China Morning Post and the Hong Kong Free Press. The RTHK app isn't quite as polished as the South China Morning Post app, but it's better than the Hong Kong Free Press app and does a decent job of delivering the news. It does send out push notifications of the most important breaking headlines, but not nearly with the same level of frequency as the South China Morning Post. There are lots of pretty good documentaries it produces which you can find on its YouTube page. It also has a weekly program called The Pulse, also available on YouTube, which does in-depth reports and interviews on current affairs in Hong Kong. It's a pretty good program to watch if you want to gain a deeper understanding of what's happening in Hong Kong, particularly with politics. And they usually get politicians onto the show and grill them with some pretty tough questioning. Here is citing concerns over national security. And is it not a fact that all political dissidence on the mainland is suppressed in the name of national well, security. Where, where lawyers, that is all lawyer, or not is lawyer lawyer to the point. Well, An interview from the polls went viral globally in 2019. RTHK journalist Yvonne Tong was interviewing Bruce Elwood from the WHO about the COVID-19 pandemic when she asked this question. Would the WHO consider Taiwan's membership? Hello? We, 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 Sorry, okay, I can't hear you. I couldn't hear your question. Okay, yeah, let me, let, let me, let me repeat the question. No, so. that's okay. Let, let's move to another one then. Right, because, because I'm, I'm actually curious on talking about Taiwan as well, on Taiwan's case. We decided to give Dr. Alward another call to follow up. And I just want to see if you can comment a bit on how Taiwan has done so far in terms of containing the virus. Well, we've, we've already talked about China. And, um, you know, when you look across all the different areas of, uh, of China, they've actually all done quite a good job. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for inviting us to participate. His handling of the question was pretty cringy, to say the least. But it highlighted what a lot of people suspected, that the WHO has been pretty deferential to China by going with their official position that Taiwan is a part of China. This means that Taiwan can't be a member of the WHO and has been excluded from important briefings on the COVID-19 pandemic. There have also been fears that RTHK's independence is being eroded and that it could one day become the mouthpiece of the Hong Kong government. Two examples have made this apparent, both from the Cantonese side of RTHK. The first example is that of journalist Nabila Kosa, who had her probation extended for 120 days and was placed under investigation for her conduct after there were complaints about her tough questioning of Chief Executive Carrie Lam and other government officials. The second example is that of a long-running satirical show called Headliner, which was suspended indefinitely in May 2020 for running an episode that poked fun at the Hong Kong police. Champagne. Criticism from the chief of police eventually led to the show's suspension. These examples do seem quite worrying given that tough questioning should be an important part of holding any government to account and that the authorities can be so sensitive to humour. On top of all this, several pro-government figures have said that RTHK should be a pro-government mouthpiece and should have its funding taken away if it continues to criticise the Hong Kong government. I guess we will just have to wait and see if the Hong Kong government begins to interfere more in the editorial of RTHK. But for now, RTHK is the BBC of Hong Kong. It's a solid and fairly impartial news source and should be one of the first things you turn to every day to get your news on Hong Kong. Apple Daily. Ah, where do I even begin? Apple Daily is definitely the news outlet with the most personality and the most controversy associated with it. 
Founded in 1995 by entrepreneur Jimmy Lai, it was the first tabloid-style newspaper in Hong Kong. And as with all tabloid newspapers, it publishes sensational headlines, often focusing on stories about public figure scandals. It's also a firmly pro-democracy newspaper. And I don't just mean firmly. The newspaper effectively campaigns for the pro-democracy movement and has played important roles in driving up support for the 2014 and 2019 protests in Hong Kong. This, of course, has attracted controversy and has landed the newspaper and its founder Jimmy Lai in hot water. Jimmy Lai is a public figure who is almost as big, if not bigger, than his newspaper. He is a real rags-to-riches story. Born in Guangzhou, mainland China in 1947, he immigrated to Hong Kong illegally as a stowaway on a boat and began working in a factory. He rose to manager position in that factory and then started his own business. He became incredibly successful in the 1970s and the 1980s when Hong Kong's economy rapidly grew as one of the four Asian tigers. He then founded Apple Daily in 1995, which quickly became one of Hong Kong's most popular newspapers. He is a firm supporter of the pro-democracy movement and a fierce critic of the Hong Kong government and the Chinese Communist Party, which are views that are reflected in his newspaper. Apple Daily has been a Chinese language only news outlet up until 2020, when it finally launched an English language version. The English version still has a bit of catching up to do with the Chinese version in terms of the level of news coverage. And it focuses more on political news rather than celebrity news compared to the Chinese version, which is fine by me because that's the news that matters more. And Apple Daily appears to cover these stories in the same manner as its Chinese version, providing more of a local Hong Kong perspective on the news than the expat perspective that the South China Morning Post and the Hong Kong Free Press seem to approach it from. This is particularly the case in its opinion pieces, many of which are directly translated from the Chinese version of the newspaper. The current political crackdown in Hong Kong has affected Apple Daily. Its offices were raided by the police, and founder Jimmy Lai, at the time of filming this video, is currently in jail awaiting trial for national security offences. Of all the news outlets in Hong Kong, it seems it's the one that the Hong Kong government seems most intent on cracking down on. Former chief executive of Hong Kong, Lun Chung Ying, constantly attacks Apple Daily on his social media, much in the same way that former US President Donald Trump used to attack the liberal media on his Twitter account. Many other pro-government figures have also attacked Apple Daily. It really is a newspaper that is a thorn in the government's side. So if you want the news from both a local Hong Kong and the pro-democracy perspective, covering stories that other English language news sources might not cover, albeit with a lot of sensationalism, Apple Daily is the one to read. TVB Pearl. TVB stands for Television Broadcast. As the name suggests, TVB operates television channels. TVB Jade is the main Cantonese service, and TVB Pearl is the English service. TVB has been around for a while. It was started in 1967 by entertainment mogul Sir Run Run Shaw and businessman Sir Douglas Clegg and Harold Lee Xiao Wo. It's still the most popular terrestrial TV channel in Hong Kong and is known for its dramas and Miss Hong Kong TV pageant, which younger Hong Kongers mockingly refer to as Miss TVB. The Cantonese channel is pro-China, so much so that pro-democracy supporters call it CCTVB, a mocking reference to China Central Television, which is the propaganda news channel in mainland China. Much of the news coverage is fairly obviously biased towards supporting the Hong Kong government, and it focuses more on the disruption caused by the pro-democracy movement rather than the actual political frustrations that drove so many people to go out and protest on the streets of Hong Kong. TVB has also run an explainer to show why the national security law is good for Hong Kong. And it's not hard to see why they're pro-China. TVB's viewers are mostly conservative older generations who tend to be pro-government. But more importantly, TVB broadcasts programs in mainland China and has mostly pro-China senior management and owners. Their pro-China bias, particularly during the 2019 and 2020 protests, 
led to many brands like Picari Sweat and Pizza Hut pulling out of their advertising contracts with the channel. Several reporters for the channel also quit because of this pro-China bias. On the political spectrum, I'd place TVB as firmly pro-China. That's the Cantonese news though. The English news on the TVB Pearl channel is perhaps a little bit less pro-China. It delivers fairly comprehensive coverage of news stories happening in Hong Kong and across the world. So it's an okay source if you want a fairly swift roundup of the news of today. But it's the current affairs program called Straight Talk, which is where the real value is. The program is hosted by Michael Chagani, who invites political figures and sometimes celebrities to discuss current affairs. And Michael Chagani doesn't hold back. Again, by sitting down, by sitting down, but Michael, with who? It's sitting. You, you saw Carrie Lam I'd in her met. usual arrogant way saying it's wishful thinking to mm. have the four mm. demands. Mm. You've got uh, police surrounding, laying siege to a university. Yes. You know who are you going to sit down with? Well, I. Yeah, it's great watching some of these interviewees struggle. Michael Chigani leans towards the pro-democracy side, and he is fairly open about that when he gives opinions in other news outlets. His slight anti-government stance sometimes comes through in his line of questioning. So yes, TVB, very pro-China Cantonese news coverage, slightly more neutral English news coverage, and a pretty decent current affairs program called Straight Talk. So those are the main sources of English language news in Hong Kong. Usually South China Morning Post is the one that provides the most frequent notifications on my iPhone that makes me aware of important breaking news. But, and here's my tip for you, I will then follow up that breaking news by going to RTHK and Hong Kong Free Press so that I get a wider range of coverage of the news from different angles. I'll also read Apple Daily news articles to get a sense of the other bits of news and issues from the local Hong Kong perspective that these news outlets may have missed. TVB News I'll only really watch if I have to, often if I'm at a relative's place. But their Straight Talk program I'll watch from time to time because who doesn't like watching political figures being grilled? But you are never going to be as on top of the news as a local Hong Konger if you only stick to English language news. Even the largest and most established English language news outlets, South China Morning Post and RTHK, are often over half an hour slower than Chinese language news outlets to break important news. And they often don't contain as much detail as the Chinese language news. So you can either do two things, learn to read Chinese, or the easier option, use Google Translate. HK01 is a Chinese language newspaper which has a reputation for frequently being the first to publish important breaking news, particularly political news in Hong Kong. You can read their news articles by going on their website using Google Chrome and then Google translating the page. Although be aware, they do lean towards the pro-government stance. I also recommend doing this with the Chinese version of Apple Daily, which has more articles and contains more details than the English language version. So now you can be as clued up as a local Hong Konger on Hong Kong news. So after watching this video, if you're someone that lives in Hong Kong and doesn't understand Chinese, you now have no excuse to not know what's happening in Hong Kong. Thank you for watching.